Hey YouTube, Cam here. Thought I'd bring you something a little bit different today. Um, I know a lot of a lot of you out there are wearing fragrances to uh, to impress other people, um, maybe get women, uh, whatever. And you know, usually I'm I'm telling you what I think about a fragrance, and I, I thought it might be might be nice to do something a little different. I asked my wife to tell me of all the fragrances we have, what five fragrances that she likes to smell the most on me. And uh, kind of interesting. Interesting uh, results, if you will. So I'm going to go through these really quickly. She gave me the top five, and then she gave me a couple of honorable mentions. And then she went through, and she gave me some notes on her thoughts as to why she likes these fragrances on me, what she enjoys about them. And uh, so, like I said, I, th I think the, the, the thing about this that, that hopefully is helpful to you is that this is coming from the perspective of a woman. I realize my wife is a woman, not women, generally. She doesn't speak for all women, and, and you know, scent is such a, it's such a subjective thing, right? We all like different things, but I think that generally um, a lot of us like similar things as well. So here you go. From the perspective of my wife, uh, five fragrances that she really enjoys on me and why, and a couple of honorable mentions um, and why she likes those on me as well. And so I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one she wrote down. I don't know that these are in a particular order. I don't know that she ranked them from her top to her, um, you know, her, her favorite to, you know, number seven or number five or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and do them in the order that she wrote them down. So number one, Boss Bottled. Recently did a video on this. This was my uh, Valentine's Day scent, uh, and a lot of that had to do with the fact that my wife loves this stuff. So here we go, Boss Bottle um, needs. I'm not going to say a lot about these fragrances. We're not going to go, uh, you know, great deal into the notes and things like that. Just to tell you really quickly, though, um, this is just a, a nice, sweet, uh, appley, vanilla-like uh, fragrance with uh, maybe some woods in it as well. Very safe, very pleasing. And uh, my wife loves it, and here's what she wrote about it. She said, it is comfortable, it is warm, and it is sexy. There you go, Boss Bottled. Um, next one. This is Hot Water by uh, Davidoff. You know, the, of course, everyone knows Davidoff because uh, of cool water, and this is, you know, one of the, one of the flankers or follow-ups or whatever, hot water. Um, not a lot of love for this out there. I can tell why. I mean, I understand. This stuff is pretty darn synthetic. That's not always a bad thing. Synthetic is not always a terrible thing. In the end, what is the function of a fragrance? The function of a fragrance is to smell good. This stuff smells good. What my wife said about hot water is that it is masculine. Uh, she said, what a good looking guy would smell like. Very attractive. Um, there have been a couple of times that I've put this stuff on and shortly thereafter walked into a room that my wife has been in and had her just really respond. Uh, there was one time, just, you know, what are you wearing? Uh, and it was hot water. She, she enjoys the stuff. So, um, yeah, it's synthetic. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna defend it, uh, uh, you know, on that front by any means, but it smells nice. It's pleasant stuff. It's, uh, you know, darker, spicier. It's, it's good stuff. The third one she wrote down is well loved in the fragrance community. This guy right here, Terry de Hermes. Um, a, a, an earthy, vetivery, vetivery fragrance um, with some citrus in there as well. Um, some people, you know, think it's like a dirty orange. Um, I don't get dirt as much, you know, as far as the earth is concerned. I get more of a kind of a mineral rock-like smell to it. Um, but she enjoys this stuff. And what she wrote about Ter Terra de Hermes is hot and dry. Reminds me of a summer, uh, which is my favorite time of year. Or reminds me of summer, which is my favorite time of year. So Terra de Hermes. My, my wife enjoys this stuff. Now, one, one caveat with Terra de Hermes. She also said that at times uh, she finds it kind of strange, uh, kind of weird. So keep that in mind. Uh, next one. Moving on. Blue de Chanel. Uh, really nice stuff. Uh, complex stuff. Uh, this is spicy. It's green. It's uh, woody. It's it's uh, f even a bit fresh at the open. Um, it's sweet. There's a lot going on in here. 
Um, I even get a little uh, a little platinum egoist in here at times, and that probably you know harkens back to the, the, the greenness of the fragrance. But there's just there's a ton going on in here. This is really nice stuff. My wife enjoys it, and what she wrote about it was uh, similar to how I feel about hot water, except more fresh. And remember what she wrote about hot water was masculine and what a good-looking guy would smell like. Very attractive. So similar to her feelings on hot water, only more fresh. And to round out her top five, Green Irish Tweed. Needs no introduction. Um, this is a very uh, green, beautiful fragrance. Um, and and one, one of the really nice things about it is it darkens towards the end. It, it darkens and gets almost a little a little thicker. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. I don't know if that's the ambergris that's, that's coming up and, and kind of you know adding some some bulk to the fragrance, uh, thickening it up a little bit, darkening it up a little bit. Um, but this is nice stuff. Green Irish Tweed. We don't need to talk about it much. Um, and, and you know what? There's your top five. Now, I'm going to go go ahead and... Uh, oh, actually, sorry. Let me tell you what she said about it. Uh, Green Irish Tweed, a gentleman's frag. Very classy and handsome. And there you go. Um, what more needs to be said about Green Irish Tweed? Uh, and then the honorable mentions. First, this guy right here, Ancre Noir. Um, you know, I've been wearing this the past couple of days. I've actually, I've got this on today. I wore it yesterday uh, to church, mind you. And... Um, it, it's it's nice stuff. So vetiver, absolutely vetiver. And so I I got something a little bit different out of it yesterday than I got out of it at least initially today. Uh, when I wore this yesterday, initially I got a very vetivery, rooty. You know, the roots of the vetiver. I got the roots, and it was almost like there was still some dirt on them. So so a very dirty uh, vetivery fragrance right out the gate. A lot of vetiver. And interestingly enough, after several hours. Uh, it it sweetened up a lot, a lot more than I would have expected it to. It sweetened up quite a bit, um, but my wife really enjoyed it. I put it on today, and what did I get? You know, almost almost right out of the bottle, an inkiness, and I had my wife smell it, and she kind of picked up on that inkiness a bit as well. Um, but then you know I let it go for a little while and it turned into just vetiver, right? Uh, so. Interesting stuff. You might get some inkiness at times. You're definitely going to get some, you know, some dirty vetiver. Um, but also, uh, it's going to get sweet at the end, which is nice. I, I, I really like sweet fragrances. But my wife really enjoys this. What she wrote about it was, I enjoy vetiver frags, unique and masculine. And you, you can see that because, you know, in, in the top five, Terre d'Hermes, that's a vetiver frag, right? There you go. One of our honorable mentions, vetiver frag. So, Ancre Noir. The other nice thing about Ancre Noir is that it's pretty darn affordable, right? It's nice stuff, and you can pretty uh, pick it up pretty cheaply online. And final honorable mention. This is Kobe by Zerjoff. And uh, Kobe is, uh, there's some complexity to Kobe. Kobe is also kind of a green woody fragrance uh, as well that uh, sweetens up shortly after you get into it. Um, it starts off uh, very, I would say, uh, green and woody with a lot of freshness, right? Citrus. So it's, it, it is very fresh. It's very green. It's very woody. This would be a great spring scent because of that opening. But shortly thereafter, it sweetens up. And that sweetness that you get as the, as the fragrance develops um, is not, it doesn't come across to me to be um, vanilla-like or anything like that, uh, honey-like. It, it, it's almost butterscotchy to me. Right, almost a butterscotch feel to it. Uh, it's nice stuff. Uh, anyway, Kobe, this is what she wrote about Kobe. Very complex and interesting. It smells mysterious, but not unapproachable. So there you go. I mean, that's that's her top five. Uh, just to go over those with you really quickly, her the top five fragrances she enjoys smelling on me the most. Boss Bottled, Hot Water, Terre d'Hermes, Blue de Chanel, Green Irish Tweed. And then the two honorable mentions, Ancre Noir and Kobe. Now, one thing that I found interesting about this, this list that she gave me, we own a number of niche fragrances. My wife enjoys wearing niche fragrances. She's got a bunch of designers, and she wears designers too. Um, but it, it's not that she doesn't have a, a mature palette or a palette that has, has developed some by any means. She enjoys wearing niche. Um, yet, 
of the top five fragrances she enjoys smelling on me, four of them are designers. Um, so just keep that in mind, guys. You know, as you're as you're looking for you know for new fragrances uh, to to impress people, you know, to be complimented, to you know, to I don't know, impress the ladies. Uh, I think Coach Rob at one point kind of made that that same observation when he said women tend to like designer stuff. So it's not that it's not that women uh, can't or won't like niche stuff uh, by any means, but I think designers tend to be a little bit more generally pleasing. And, and they're designed to be. They're designed to sell. But I uh, hope that video was helpful. Give me your thoughts below. I mean, if this was helpful, uh, let me know. And uh, thanks for tuning in.